Hello, what's happening, everybody? We're back for the 50th episode of Cooking with Frag, and what a beautiful day it is. We're going to be cooking chicken marsala today. We have a lot to cover in this episode. I'm going to talk a little about my cooking experience uh, in kitchens and what cooking's done for my life. But let's hop right into the chop, and we'll talk about the basics for this recipe. It's a very simple recipe to execute. Uh, you need mushrooms, shallot, chicken, cream, and chicken broth. If you just throw all these ingredients in a pan, it's not going to taste very good. We're going to talk about how to make these ingredients taste good. The mushrooms are going to be the star of the chicken marsala. The reason it's called marsala is we're going to be using dry marsala wine uh, to deglaze our pan. This is where all of our flavor is going to come from. Mushrooms are a really wonderful ingredient if they're cooked properly. In order to properly cook a mushroom, it has for this type of uh, execution, it needs to be very well cooked. The older a mushroom is, the more flavor it will have. These are not old mushrooms. The longer you cook a mushroom, the more flavor it will have. We need to aggressively cook these mushrooms to get the proper flavor uh, for our base sauce. Chicken broth by itself is a very neutral flavor, as is cream. So we need a rich depth to the sauce. What I'm going to do is quarter these mushrooms to expose as much surface area as possible. Then we're going to cook them until they're very brown. Anytime you make a sauce in pan, the trick is to get as much stuff in the pan as possible. And by that, I mean as much stuff cooked onto the surface of the pan. So when you deglaze, all of it comes off and adds a ni that nice, rich flavor you're looking for. So pro tip for you guys, you'll see that I put all of my cutting ingredients on the left-hand side since I'm right-handed. This means each time I make a cut, it'll come out on the right-hand side of the knife. Also, you'll notice I'm not quartering the mushrooms right away. I'm halving them. You always want to try to do one operation at a time. This will save you, uh, this will save you a lot of time later down the road. So we'll do all of our whole mushrooms in half, then we'll do all our half mushrooms in half again. So if you're left-handed, it'd be the opposite. You'd put all your whole product on the right-hand side, and your cuts would end up on the left. I do very much enjoy this recipe. I have my own little spin on it. Uh, a lot of recipes will call for herbs and stuff in this. We're not going to be using any herbs. Sage is pretty commonly used in chicken marsala, uh, or thyme, or a few others. But I like to keep mine nice and simple and really develop the base flavor of the sauce. All right, now everything goes back to the left. And while we're doing this, I'm going to get my pan heating up a little bit. Let's put it on a nice low heat. We'll talk about how to properly uh, cook. Oh, come on, there we go properly cook the mushrooms when the time comes. But I'm just going to get just a little bit of oil in this pan heating up so we have a nice start for our mushrooms. About a tablespoon. So it is a lot more time consuming to chop the mushrooms this way, but let me tell you it makes a really huge difference in the end product. By doing this we're exposing more surface area on the mushrooms, which means more browning, which means more flavor. One of the chefs uh, in my culinary school, Chef Baldwin, uh, taught me about cooking mushrooms this way. And uh, I have to say I've been cooking them this way since. Especially since it'll be a sauce. Uh, these will cook down quite a bit and be nice little tidbits or flavor bombs when we're done. Mushrooms are a lot like sponges. They'll take on whatever flavor you put in them in addition to having their rich flavor when they cook down all the way. So we'll be adding the mushrooms back in before we add the marsala wine so that the wine will cook into the mushrooms. Deglazing with wine is a pretty common, uh, common method. I don't cook with alcohol very much, but uh, I will say that marsala wine has a really great flavor for cooking. And this also may seem like a lot of mushrooms for a single portion, but uh, these will cook down <laughs> a lot. A fully cooked mushroom is about a quarter of the size of the raw mushroom, maybe even a bit less. Also, while I'm cooking at the pan, I now have access to chat, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to answer if I know the answer to it. So I've been cooking for, well, my whole life, but I cook professionally for about seven years or so. It's definitely, definitely a good time. And a little over three years ago, during the Tier Livestream Challenge, I had the idea for a weekly cooking stream, which we ran for about 35 weeks. Took a little break and did episodes here and there, but we're now back on a once-monthly format, thanks to the lovely Patreon supporters. And recipes are submitted from the patrons. This was something that was suggested. 
You pick one person per month, and they get to choose whatever they want to see me cook. And if I don't know how to cook it, I learn. Nice thing about cooking is once you, uh, once you get your, your sea legs in the kitchen, you can figure out most recipes. Uh, if you, you might have to give it a couple of tries to get it right, but you can always get there. Even the best cooks make mistakes, and making mistakes is just part of cooking. The only thing you really have to be afraid of in cooking is your own fear of messing up. Mistakes happen. All right, so we have this nice bunch of lovely quartered mushrooms. We have our pan on a low heat right now. When I'm browning mushrooms, a lot of people want to add the mushrooms with really hot oil. I do not feel this is the best method. Mushrooms like to sponge out all their liquid. So what I like to do is start in a lower heat, get them sweating, and then crank the heat up. This way, it'll be really hard to burn them. If you add mushrooms to just a very hot pan, it is actually quite easy to char the outside of the mushroom. Doing it this way, not so much. Give these a little shake in the oil. We don't need too much oil here, just about a tablespoon. Uh, no matter how much oil you add to the pan, the mushrooms will soak it up. If you add too much, you'll end up with a very greasy product at the end. All right, so we're just going to let these start sweating a little bit. If you're worried your pan's too dry, you can always add a splash of water to speed up the sweating process, but we shouldn't need to do that here. In this case, we'd add just a little bit of stock. Well, while those are going, uh, we're going to start cutting our other non-meat ingredients. We want to make sure we cut everything on the cutting board that is not meat-related so we can cut our meat last and not have to wash our cutting board halfway through. A little shake, they're starting to sizzle, turn them down just a smidge. It'll take quite a while to cook these mushrooms, so we'll have plenty of time to talk. Have already washed parsley. Uh, always make sure you wash your parsley. Parsley is pretty disgusting uh, <laughs> when it's farmed, so it's very important that you clean it properly. Otherwise, you risk a foodborne illness for no reason. Same could be said for chicken, but you honestly don't think of things like lettuce and herbs being uh, dangerous, but they very much can be. All right, just toss that in there. So we can get this a nice rough chop. This is more so for color than anything. This will be a pretty bland looking dish. If we're gonna do any other herb other than parsley, we'd add it in when we were finishing off the sauce, but this will just be a nice little garnish. Notice how I'm putting my hand flat on top of the blade, like so. This is to make sure there's no mistakes. If you try to grab your knife like this, often your thumb can end up slipping below the blade, and that's no fun at all. All right, that should be adequate. A little bowl of parsley. All right, so I can hear my mushrooms are starting to sizzle even more, so we're going to give them a little toss here. It's not our intention to brown the mushrooms right now. It's our intention to get them sweating. We can always brown them later. In fact, it's better if we do brown them later. Thyme and mushrooms is a very nice combination. Thyme garlic mushroom is one of my personal favorites. Though we're not going to be using any garlic in this recipe. Feel free to add some garlic if you want to. Half the fun of cooking is experimenting. All right, give our cutting board a little wipe here. All right, now we're going to be cutting a shallot. This will be added towards the end of the sauce. If you don't know what a shallot is, it's basically like a mix between onion and garlic. It's a very commonly used uh, ingredient in professional kitchens. Not so much in home cooking, though I think more people should use shallots. All right. So generally on shallots, you want to remove the outer layer of the shallot. Uh, oftentimes it'll be kind of slimy or mushy. That does not mean your shallot's bad. So to do that, I'll just demonstrate on this one, even though it doesn't need it. You just make a small cut down and just peel off the outside layer. So here's that nice onion film on there too. Okay, well I fudged that one up. It's much thicker than I anticipated. We'll just leave it be. All right, so for sauces on shallots, I like to make half moons. All right, our pan's a little bit too hot, not much though. Just to turn it down a little bit till they sweat some more. Get back in there. 
All right. So for these shallots, what I'm going to do is make half moons. To make half moons, we're going to cut the shallot in half, and then we're just going to slice it pretty thin this way. I think these add really nice texture and flavor, of course. This is a particularly big shallot, so we're going to cut this one in quarters and do the same thing. Try to keep most things, especially in sauces, uh, the size to fit on a spoon or smaller. Anything bigger than that becomes cumbersome to eat. All right. So we'll add these right after we deglaze the pan, or as we're deglazing the pan, I should say. Give our cutting board a nice wipe here, and then we'll go back to tend to our mushrooms. All right, we can see there's a lot of moisture coming off the mushrooms now. This is the point we wanted to reach. Now that they're sweating, uh, we'll be able to get a nice brown on them. So we want to kind of not mess with these for a little bit to get the nice brown color. You can see a little bit of brown color on this mushroom versus the other side. We're looking for a deep, dark brown on all sides of all the mushrooms. Uh, I've been full-time streaming for four years and three months now, Nate Gill. I left my last cooking job on the last or 21st day of the two-year live stream challenge. We did the two-year live stream challenge from January 5th, 2012 to January 6th, 2014. And here we are a little over two years later. Right now we're making chicken marsala evil minx. What we're going to do to uh, break down the recipe, we're going to cook down these mushrooms till they're very brown. We're going to remove the mushrooms from the pan. We're going to sear off our chicken breast. Then we're going to add the mushrooms and, sh and then shallots back in, deglaze the pan with marsala wine. Then we're going to uh, add chicken broth and cream and let that reduce until we have a nice, beautiful sauce. All right, we're not going to mess with those. Okay. Now we're going to head back to our cutting board and break down our chicken piece here. I really dislike chicken as an ingredient because it's slimy and gross. It does taste good when it's done, but... Uh, that's A-OK. -okay. We're going to manipulate this chicken breast a little bit because we do definitely don't need a piece this big. All right, a couple things to look for on chicken breast. One is this right here. This is where the wing connects to the breast. There will often be a piece of sinew or even a chunk of bone in there. So it's very important that you check there on all chicken breasts and remove that piece of sinew and bone if it is there. And it sure was. There's actually a chunk of bone in this one. All right, this is the chicken tender right here. It's the piece that connects to the breast. We're just going to cut that off. We're not going to use that. I'm actually going to even this piece out a little bit. If you have uh, extra odds and ends, you can make like chicken strips out of those, or you can also uh, just throw them in the freezer, and then if you make a batch of stock, uh, these are perfect for it. Okay, I'm actually going to square this piece off. And then we're just going to punch it down. You can use a meat mallet to do this, but your fist works just fine, too. All right. Punch that one a little bit hard, so let's cut that off. Okay, so now we have a nice flat piece of chicken. This should sear off pretty good. Uh, some options for masala or recipes will call for... Um, uh, dredging this in flour. Uh, I don't do that for my chicken breasts. It just adds calories. It will make it a little more crispy, a little more flavor in some cases, but I don't think it adds too much. We're going to have a very heavily seasoned sauce, so having a heavily seasoned chicken breast is not as important. You can see how much the mushrooms have reduced already. They're definitely getting down there. So let's talk about a little bit about my, uh, my journey with cooking. I'll clean off my knife real quick. Cooking is a really important part of my life and has been for a long time. I don't cook as much as I used to, but I still very much enjoy it. Um, when I decided to go to culinary school, my life was kind of at a weird point. I felt kind of lost. I didn't have anything that I really wanted to do. And uh, 
cooking really provided me with an outlet to be creative, and it was the first time I've ever actually been good at something as far as as work goes. It was something I could work at, and I could see the tangible improvements. Uh, I think that's one of the greatest things that cooking offers to people. You don't have to be a master cook to feel accomplished when you cook things. Cooking is really the culmination of lots of knowledge and trying out lots of different things. And even if you're not a great cook, when you nail a recipe or you master a recipe for the first time, you feel very accomplished. So I encourage everybody to cook because it does feel good when you do well. And uh, it's one of your three basic needs, food, water, shelter. If you can take care of food, that's very good for you. And of course, Twitch right now has running the, uh, I guess it's the French Chef slash The Joy of Cooking by Julia Childs, which is an amazing show. And there's also many uh, cooking-only streams here on Twitch now. I was one of the first to do a cooking stream on the site over three years ago, but it's been really amazing to see how many people are now cooking uh, and even have full-time cooking streams here on the site. I encourage you to check out the uh, creative directory and find other cooking streams. Everybody has their own approaches, everybody has their own little tricks, and everybody has some amazing rep recipes up their, uh, up their sleeve. Okay, we see our mushrooms now. They're not letting off as much moisture. You can see a little bit of steam rolling off, but not like it was before. This is when they're really going to start to brown, so we're not going to mess with them too much. We're going to get a nice golden brown on the sides. You really don't have to worry about burning mushrooms. Uh, that's the main reason, Huggy Chunk. Raw meat's pretty gross. Um, honestly, chicken is really nasty. The conditions it's raised in are not great. About a 99.9% .9 chance there's something on that chicken breast that can make you sick. So always be careful. All right, let's talk about the seasoning salt we use in my house. This is our seasoning salt. It's called mushroom salt. What this is is salt, dried porcini mushrooms into a powder, red pepper flake, and a little bit of dried thyme. Uh, this is what we've been using pretty much for everything. And since we're making a mushroom-related dish, this will work out really good. By all means, you can use regular salt. It's not going to hurt anything. We're just going to put a little bit of this on the mushrooms. If you didn't know, salt helps extract moisture. So if you want to pull all the moisture out of something, salting it is a good idea. You'll see here in just a couple moments now that we've added the salt, there's even more steam coming off them now, which is great. You see we're starting to get that nice crispy brown on some sides. Give these a taste. Mmm, very good. All right, now we have water at a rolling boil over here. I'm going to add my portion of pasta to the water. This pasta will be done before, uh, before everything else, which is okay. I don't want to have to time it out to the exact moment. We'll end up adding this pasta into the sauce before we plate it, so it won't matter if it needs to get shocked to get cooled down. A little stir. Pasta is one of the only things you actually kind of want to stand over the pot and give it a stir every couple minutes. Nothing worse than sticky, clumpy pasta. Salted pasta water always doratus because salt raises the boiling temperature of the water, which will give you a more consistent cook. It's only about three degrees hotter if you salt the water, but it does make a big difference. Well, thanks for stopping by, Xander. Appreciate it. It's nice I can actually read chat now. If you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. So you may look at these mushrooms and say, they're done. They're not done yet. It's just like searing meat, my old chef used to say. When you think it's done, wait five more minutes. But we're certainly getting there. We want to cook most of the moisture out of the mushrooms. The longer they cook, the more density of flavor they're going to have. The more stuff is being left on the pan for our deglazing process later. Is it true that salted water helps keep it from sticking? Not really. The, the best way to stop it from sticking is make sure you stir often. It does help not, it not stick in a way, because if your water is hot enough, it'll uh, prevent sticking. The main way to get pasta to stick is one, to never stir it, or two, to have too cold of water when you add the pasta. Uh, same premise, Zebra Ducky, for sauteing anything in a pan. Push forward, pull back. And when you're sauteing in a pan, what you're really doing is you're putting the pan down at an angle, pushing forward, and then pulling it back to even. 
So you're using the lip of the pan, just the lip of the pan to flip everything. Now we're starting to get some really nicely developed browning on these here. That's the, that's the color we're looking for. That's the stuff right there. That's the goods. That's all the flavor. Um, Skeleton, this is my favorite pan to use that we have in the kitchen. I don't think nonstick's all that important, especially not if you're doing like mushrooms with oil and stuff like that. It's not too big of a deal. But having a nonstick pan certainly can be nice. Just have to make sure you don't scratch it up with a fork or anything. This is why I'm using a plastic spoon. Hey, <laughs> what's up, Gassy Mexican? Good to see you. But really excited to have been doing this for 50 episodes now. We took about a six-month break before we started the series back up, and it's been it's been really nice. I really enjoy cooking, so it's a nice uh, a nice outlet for me. And now that I'm cooking stuff that other people want to see, not just from my own repertoire, I've definitely expanded my recipes quite a bit. Believe it or not, the Cooking with Frag mac and cheese episode was one of the first times I've cooked mac and cheese myself. Did a test batch, of course, before the show, but uh, I had never actually made mac and cheese at home. So this is the hurry up and wait portion. It's really hard not to pull the mushrooms right now. We have to wait for that browning to happen on the mushrooms before we do anything else. You don't have to be great at cooking to enjoy cooking. You don't have to be great at cooking to feel accomplished. And you certainly don't have to be great at cooking to learn. The trick is to learn a recipe really well. You cook one recipe five or six times, you'll see that it gets better each time until you've mastered that recipe. And then you can work work towards a new skill set or learning a new technique. There's always more to learn when you're a cook. I think I learned something almost every day I was working in a professional kitchen just by watching somebody else or being told something or learning how to do a new recipe. All the Cooking with Frags are on YouTube, yes. They're all archived. All right, we got like two more minutes on these and I'm gonna pull them, but they are looking nice and brown and tasty. A really nice thing you can do for mushrooms with sauce, too, is if you actually shred the mushrooms, like on a cheese grater, you can make what's called a duck cell. You put the shredded mushrooms in a pan with a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and let it cook on a really low heat till they're very dry. It makes a very intense mushroom flavor. Cast iron pans are a great tool to have, Kendra Boom, and you can do almost anything in a cast iron pan, including this recipe right here. All right, let's pull a piece of pasta here and taste it. Probably be easier to set a timer. I don't know. I like pulling the pasta out of the hot water for some reason. Always have. Not even close. Very crunchy. All right, one more flip. So you see this is like a mountain of mushrooms when we started, and now it's, uh, it's down to that. Oh, uh, I think I've made a steak marinade with Marsala before. Yeah, KJ, but I mainly use it for this uh, when I make chicken Marsala. It's been a long time since i made chicken Marsala. I'll tell you that right now. Two minutes. So our pan's on pretty hot right now, too. When we pull the mushrooms into this bowl, I'm going to turn my heat down a smidge, add a little more oil, then start cooking the chicken. But this is by far the most important part of the recipe is getting a nice brown on the mushrooms. This will lay the flavor for the rest of the sauce. If you just lightly cook the mushrooms or add them when you're making the sauce, you're going to end up with a very muddy tasting sauce. There's a lot of different variations on chicken marsala. This is a very basic preparation, but that's the way I prefer it. I like easy to make food and I think basic flavors are nice. It's really cool to make, you know, stuff that has 30 different spices in it, but realistically cooking that on a daily basis is not ideal. I like to keep my food simple so that if I need to cook something on the fly, we know what to do. All right, these are barely pulling off moisture now, so we're going to call these done. You can see they're nice and brown. 
Very flavorful. I can actually smell a little bit of burning, which is good. All right, so we're just going to pull these into the bowl. We're going to add these back in when we deglaze later. May not look like much is on the pan, but there is actually quite a bit on the pan here. So I'm going to turn my heat down to about a medium. We're going to add a little bit of oil to the pan. This will heat up very quickly. Yeah, that might even be a bit much, but that's okay. So I'm going to move my flame over to the edge of the pan here where my oil is. So when I add my chicken breasts, we get a nice sizzle and an even cook. Using a big pan like this to cook a piece of meat is good, but you need to make sure you're managing where your heat is. Okay. We're going to season this chicken breast with our mushroom salt real quick. Uh, you don't have to use mushroom salt. You can just use regular salt and pepper. But we have mushroom salt, so I'm using it. Now, if we would have flour dredged this chicken breast, we'd get a lot nicer browning on it. But that is not the point here. We already got enough browning flavor from the... Uh, from the mushrooms that it's not as important. And that flour, it complicates things a little bit. All right, we're gonna rinse our cutting board and flip it over. And we'll of course bleach sanitize everything later. But as is, just wanna give it a little, little rinse and get it back on the station with the clean side up, of course. All righty. Pasta. How you doing, pasta? Perfect. All right, so I'm going to take this pasta over the sink. I'm going to pour it into this small sieve. Then we're going to run cold water over it to shock it. The reason that you shock your pasta is to stop it from cooking. If we leave this just at uh, full temperature here, what's going to happen is it's going to get very gummy and very nasty very overcooked so we're just cooling it down a bit to stop it from cooking we do not need to add any oil to this uh, to keep it from clumping because we're going to add it to our sauce which will break it apart again our sauce is going to be very high in fat so we do not need to add any more fat to this all right nice cool pasta what a cool guy all right let's give our chicken breast a little peeksy here Starting to get a little bit of brown, but not quite enough. I'm also going to pour some of the oil off this pan uh, when we're done. Let me grab a little bowl for that. All right. Looking good. Yeah, it's not going to make uh, any difference in this case, Faramir. I just don't want it to overcook. I want it to stay at that nice, that nice al dente texture. Do, 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 do. Well, hurry up and wait again. Got to get this. Uh, get this I'm using uh, canola oil. You never want to use olive oil for this type of preparation. Olive oil has a smoking temperature of 425 degrees. Uh, canola is a lot closer to 475. Uh, if you want to properly sear a piece of meat, you cannot use olive oil without it burning. Why am I only cooking one piece? Because I'm making a single serving. So we got an okay brown on the chicken there. I'm going to flip it back over for a second. We'd rather get a good sear on one side and a bad sear on the other side than a mediocre sear on both sides. Oh, hurry up and wait. Well, yeah, this would be like basically what I would do normally, Faramir. I can easily eat that many mushrooms. I only really like to eat about five ounces of meat or so. It's probably like a six-ounce portion, I'd imagine. But uh, 
yeah, this is plenty, plenty of meat for one serving for me. So since we didn't flour the chicken, we're not going to get the best sear in the world, but it's definitely adequate. We got plenty of browning flavor on the mushrooms, so we're looking good. Oh, certainly can't think of a name. You definitely mess stuff up and have to throw it out. It happens all the time. Can't send out overcooked or undercooked meat. Though in my three years working as a broiler cook, I only had three steaks sent back, so that's pretty good. Can I explain, define, explain deglazing? Great question. So when you deglaze a pan, what we're doing right now is we cooked everything in this pan. Uh, that'll make a lot of stuff stick to the pan and become little pieces of carbon, basically. When you deglaze the pan, you're getting all of that carbon off the pan, which uh, adds to the flavor of the sauce. So we cooked the mushrooms in this pan, now we're searing a chicken breast in this pan. Then we're going to uh, deglaze it with the Marsala wine to get all those little bits of flavor off the inside of the pan and into the sauce. Okay, all right, I can tell it's not done. We've got a handy-dandy meat thermometer here. If you guys don't have one, spend seven bucks on a meat thermometer. It's greatly helpful. If you're an experienced uh, cook and you know how to cook all kinds of meat, then it's not as big of a deal. You can usually tell just by touching something. But it's a lot easier just to put a thermometer in it. It really is, especially for steaks. Yes, the wine takes it off the pan to add to the sauce, exactly. The oil does not really deglaze the pan, no. The oil will facilitate cooking stuff onto the pan. I don't know if you guys can see in the pan here. You can see those little bits of brown floating around in the oil. That's what we're trying to cook down and get in the sauce. Yeah, white wine in a pan does make some very nice pan sauces. Does chicken need to rest like beef after frying? Absolutely. Uh, generally, pool chicken at about 155 degrees. This will carry it over to the safe temperature of 165. How do we make the mushroom salt? Can't give you exact measurements right now, but we used uh, sea salt, and then we used a blender to grind up pr dry prosciutto mushrooms, red pepper flake, and dried thyme. Very easy. A little bit better on that side. Just gonna give it a little poke, see where we're at. So we're currently at 119 degrees. Once you reach the 100 degree mark on anything you're cooking meat-wise, it accelerates very fast from there. I'm gonna turn my pan down so I don't set off my smoke alarm, because it's very loud. We're definitely getting close. A couple more little flips. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off a paper towel here to put the chicken on when we're done. Okay, so if you're going to measure the temperature of a meat, pick it up with your tongs and then stick the thermometer right into the middle of the chicken. You can see we're at 140 right now, so about another minute or so. That's true, Faramir. You just need liquid to deglaze. As long as it's not a fat like an oil, you're good. Yes, if you want to set up your smoke alarm, use olive oil, indeed. Smoking temperature of olive oil, once again, is 425. Canola, canola oil is about 475, and grapeseed oil is about 500. I shouldn't poke it again, but I'm going to. The less you poke the meat, the better, because each time you poke the meat, you make a little hole, a little bit of juice comes out. It's not going to make it super dry or anything, but it doesn't help things. All right, 152. We're going to pull this off and put it on the paper towel here. We'll slice this in a minute. Okay, so you can see on the pan here all that brown stuff. We're going to very carefully move the oil over without trying to remove the brown stuff, which is our flavor. I'm just going to dump this excess in here. All right, we're going to add our mushrooms back into the pan. Give them a little shake. 
We're gonna get this heated up pretty high. And we're gonna crack open our Marsala wine. Yeah, it smells like booze. So we're using a dry Marsala for this preparation. Uh, sweet Marsala tastes much different than dry Marsala. Dry Marsala is definitely better. Uh, and I'm gonna do the smart thing here and not pour directly from the bottle. You can pour directly from the bottle, but it's a heck of a lot safer and a lot easier to measure if you pour it into a glass or something first. So we're gonna use a pretty good amount here, probably about a little over a quarter cup. And then we're gonna shake. I'm going to take our spoon and make sure we get all the little bits off. I want to scrape it real good. So the alcohol will cook off here and you'll just be left with the oaky flavor of the Marsala. So we're going to let this cook till it's almost dry. Then we're going to add our shallots and then we'll add our other ingredients. So that may seem like a lot of wine, but once it's cooked off, it's really not that much. Yes, heavy cream is coming. Yes, indeed. So we got all the little bits off the bottom of the pan. These mushrooms are just soaking up all that flavor. So we have our half moon shallots here. As soon as it gets a little bit more cooked down, we're gonna add these. We don't wanna add the shallots right now because shallots have moisture in them as well. Uh, and it'll kind of muddy up the whole thing. The shallots will become overcooked. All right, our pasta is not sticky, that's good. You, could, you can use other wines if you want to, but chicken marsala is always gonna be made with marsala wine. Oh baby, it smells so good. It smells just delightful. These are cremini mushrooms. White mushrooms will work just fine for this too. I just like the look of cremini mushrooms. They, uh, they brown up really good. All right, so our pan's starting to get a little bit drier. As soon as I can move the pan and not see liquid move around is when we're gonna add our shallots. Knowing stuff like this just takes a little bit of practice. And if you mess up the timing on this, it's not really going to affect the overall base of the sauce, especially if you brown your mushrooms properly. Okay, we're about dry now, so I'm going to add my shallots. I want these shallots to turn barely translucent before I add anything else. I'm going to turn this up pretty high. Once again, the shallots will add moisture as well. Break up these little half moons. Now you can see, oh, hopefully you can see, there's little strings on the bottom of the pan. This is the sugar from the Marsala wine, whatever sugar content was left. We want to make sure this doesn't burn, but it also, we want to caramelize it just a smidge. All right, we're going to take a little spoon here and taste. Holy shit, that's good. Definitely needs more salt. Add a little salt now and then a little salt later. These are cremini mushrooms. Drink some ink. All right, you can see how shiny the mushrooms are now. That's good. Shiny and brown. All right, so now we're going to add a little bit of chicken broth, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let this reduce just a smidge. Then we're going to add our cream. So we added the marsala flavor to the mushrooms. Now we're adding our chicken flavor. Vegetable broth would work just fine too. We're starting to get our sauce coming together. And then the secret ingredient, whipping cream. Hard to go wrong with whipping cream. I hardly ever use this ingredient in home cooking, but it is a fine ingredient. Before we add this, we're gonna turn down our heat a little bit. Then we're gonna add another secret ingredient, which is a small pad of butter. This is a handy dandy little tip I learned. Uh, if you cook mushrooms in oil, if you add just a smidge of butter at the end, dear God, it develops an amazing flavor.
So since we have so much moisture in the pan right now, it's not going to burn the butter. It's not going to burn the butter at all. We're going to let this cook down a bit, then we're going to add our cream to finish off the sauce, and then season from there. Yeah, so you cook down your mushrooms real good with the browning. If you add just a little, it doesn't take a lot. You don't need to add a huge spoonful of butter, just enough to coat everything. It adds a amazing flavor. Who would have imagined using oil and butter together would taste good? Okay, I was checking the bottom of the pan here, make sure we got all our little bits. We certainly did. We did a good, good job deglazing. The most important thing when you deglaze is make sure you get all the bits off. If you don't scrape the bottom of the pan a little bit, you're probably going to miss a few. Oh, it's almost there. I got to be patient. Patience is one of the hardest things in cooking. All right, we're going to turn down this now. We're going to add a little bit of cream. Oh, my goodness. It really does not get much better than this, I'll just tell you right now. Now, you can go as far as to add a roux to your cream sauce and stuff, but I feel that's very excessive for this application. Very excessive. Before the cream cooks down, we're going to give it another taste to make sure we're in the right flavor profile. Needs more salt. Steak Diane's amazing for a Messiah. That was the chef I worked for's favorite dish. I used to make it for him all the time. I usually make myself one, too. So I want to go pretty aggressive on the seasoning here. Uh, I want this to be pretty salty, since we didn't salt our chicken breast very much, and the noodles are unsalted as well. So you can see our cream starting to brown up, which is what we want. That white's not a very pleasant, um, pleasant color, though this nice cream is. All right, we need just a little more cream here. See the color difference there from the mushrooms. The reason the sauce looks so delicious is because we took all that time to brown the mushrooms at the beginning of the dish. So we're just going to cook this until it thickens up a little bit, then we're going to add our pasta, then we'll uh, cut our chicken breast and plate up. Let's get our plate ready. Oh. Chicken breast. Crank the heat on this. Pretty hard to burn cream. Once you, once you add that much fat, it's going to be hard to burn. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of parsley to the sauce now. We'll also add a little bit to the top of the plate, but uh, it's amazing how a little bit of green makes a huge difference. Does that look better already? Oh my god, it looks so good. Oh, and it is. All right, so while this is cooking down, I'm going to add our pasta right here. I'm going to drop this right into the middle of the pan. It's going to give it a nice little twist. Try not to lose any of the pieces in the, in the sauce, but that's okay. Just kind of want to get these coated in the cream sauce. Don't need any mushrooms in there. Yeah, there we go. And once that's heated up, we'll be ready to plate. All right, I'm going to need a towel down here. A little bit sloppy on the plate there, but that's okay, because we're going to cover the outside with the mushrooms. All right. Let me grab my clean knife. We're going to cut the chicken on a pretty severe bias to get nice big pieces. Oh, knife, don't do that to me. Well, a little bit cramped here for space. Could have got a better bias cut, but you know what? Mistakes happen. Chicken breast is nice and juicy. That's good. Okay. Fan that out over that. 
And now for the fun part. So you see we're not floating everything in cream, it's just kind of there. But the mushrooms are the best part. I'd way rather have like 10 times as many mushrooms as I would meat. Always. Finish off with a little garnish. Not my prettiest plate, but I can assure you it is quite delicious. Chicken marsala, cooking with frag style. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today for the 50th episode of Cooking with Frag, three years running. It's been beautiful. Chicken was still pretty warm when I cut through it. P still pretty warm. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer a few questions here uh, at the end of the broadcast here, and then we'll be back to our video gaming content. It's really not that much. I mean, it's... Uh, Five ounce chicken breast, uh, noodles, and a lot of mushrooms. What are some... Oh, God, I can't keep up. I saw a question I wanted to answer, and it was gone. Let's clean up a bit. Didn't do the best job of cleaning as I go today, which is always a nice skill to have. My sauce always seems to come out a bit tart somehow. Any thoughts? Use less Marsala wine, I suppose. That's the only thing that would really give tartness to the sauce. How can I incorporate the olive oil flavor? If you wanted to incorporate olive oil into this dish, what I would do is instead of putting the noodles in the sauce, I would toss those in olive oil... Um, right after they're done cooking. Then you can get a nice olive oil and salt pasta underneath your creamy marsala sauce. Are there any variations on chicken marsala that can give a unique taste? Absolutely. There's tons of chicken marsala recipes out there. Sage is a commonly used herb in chicken marsala. Um, a lot of people something like heavy garlic in it. Uh, you can really experiment with it. The marsala just speaks to the wine that's being used to deglaze the pan. Where you take it from there is your own adventure. Someone doesn't like mushrooms would be a good replace for it. You really can't replace mushrooms in this dish. Uh, you could do the same base sauce with something else. Uh, if you're going to use a different vegetable, you could use like zucchini or something. But if you're going to make the base marsala sauce, you're probably going to have to cook four or five chicken breasts in the same pan to get enough browning on there to make the sauce taste right. The chicken was just cooked in the pan, uh, they call me aces. The same pan we cooked the mushrooms in. Can you do a steak, Marsala? You could. Tofu could work if it was, like, baked crispy, I suppose. For wood or metal tools, uh, I, I don't know. All tools are good. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I've always used plastic cutting boards and steel knives. Can I do that with fettuccine? Absolutely. You can substitute any pasta that you want for underneath the chicken. The tip for keeping a knife sharp for an extended period of time is buy a steel. If you go watch the Cooking with Frag Knife Skills episode, I go over how to properly steal your knife. It'll keep it sharp about 10 times as long. Can you use red sauce in this dish instead of cream? You certainly could. You certainly could. I don't know if I'd call it chicken marsala. You'd have to be very careful with the marsala if you did red sauce. Since tomatoes are already acidic, you'd probably go very light on the marsala just to get a little uh, base flavor. It's a nice high temperature oil to use if you're searing a steak and wanted a bit of oil with the salt and pepper. Uh, grapeseed oil is the best for searing, in my opinion. Because it does not smoke till about 500, 525, so you can get a really aggressive sear on stuff with grapeseed oil. Yeah, just go uh, uh, go look on Amazon, Polly's here, okay? Use that affiliate and search for meat thermometer. This thermometer that I was using, wherever it is, 14 bucks. I've been using it for six years. I 
Uh, Knockers, you have 30 days to resubscribe. You're perfectly fine. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for coming out to the 50th episode of Coming with Frag, three years running. It was an amazing journey. I cannot wait to do it again next month. we we'll back and at it with the uh, gaming portion of the stream in about 10 minutes. Hope to see you guys there. Until next time, keep it dapper and be good to each other. That's all we got for this episode. Frag out.